it's January the 31st and it's 10 degrees outside in Missouri where I live and I'm not going fishing today instead of going fishing I'm going to make a fishing video I'm going to make a video that fits into my things I do series and the video that I'm going to make is in response to viewer questions and the questions relate to what type of fishing knot do I use so I'm going to show you my favorite fishing knot in fact almost the only knot I use I use two knots I use a knot called the guides knot and I use a loop knot the loop knot I use is Wally Marshall's loop knot you can log on to the internet and type Wally Marshall's loop knot and you can see how he ties it but all of the rest of the knots that I tie I use a knot which is called a guides knot I'm not sure it's called a guides knot that's what Homer Circle called it when I read about the knot in Outdoor Life magazine years ago Homer Circle Uncle Homer they called him was my hero Homer Circle was a fishing editor for Field and Stream magazine and for Outdoor Life magazine he had his own TV show he's a member of the Fishing Hall of Fame and anything Uncle Homer said I paid attention to and I ran on to this article and I'm not sure whether it was in Outdoor Life or Field and Stream it was in one of them and it was featuring this new fishing knot that he had learned about and he got the knot from an old river fishing guide and the fishing guide had no idea what the knot was called so Uncle Homer just called it the guide's knot I've never found it in any magazine anywhere and I've studied knots my whole life and I've never run onto this knot so if you do run onto it I'd be interested in knowing what it really should have been called at the time that I found out about the knot I was working as an industrial engineer and I had at my disposal all types of test equipment and so I decided to test the knot against all the knots that I knew about like the Palmer knot and the snail knot and the uni knot um, all of the famous knots of the time and I won't bore you with all of the uh, data that I developed regarding this knot except that I can tell you two things one that it was just as strong as any knot that I've tested but it had one big advantage and that is that it would tie all the knots that all those other knots in combination would tie and what I mean by that is that if you tie a polymer knot it's designed to tie a lure on your line if you tie a snail knot it's designed to tie a hook on your line but what about tying your line on the spool of a spinning reel or how about tying two lines together splicing them together the knot that I was testing the guides knot will do everything that all those knots would do in combination so I'll be talking as I actually produce the video about different features and showing you different things it does and then we'll summarize it at the end so let's get on with it and I'll show you the knot here we're going to show you how to tie the guides knot on a circle hook you run the line through the hook get about six inches of line pinch the line to form a loop and then wrap the tag line around the main line four or five times and then run the tag line through the loop that you formed when you pinch it and then you grab the tag line and pull it until you form the knot and then you pull the main line 
and slide the knot down to the hook. This is what we call the manual method. This knot can be tied two different ways. This is the slowest way and we call it the manual method. Here I'm going to try to stress this if I can. I want to break it and see if it breaks in the knot or in the line. <laughs> This is just six pound test line. I can't break it. <clears throat> there. Notice that the line broke out on the line instead of in the knot. That's the true test of a good knot. Let's tie the knot again for reinforcement purposes. And I want to show you another important feature of the knot. Once you have threaded the line through the hook and you're wrapping the tag end around the main line, we usually do that about five times. Then you stick the tag end through the knot that you pinched. And then you pull the little tag end to tighten the knot. Now as you slide the knot down to the hook and as it begins to tighten, if you will watch the end of this line, it will actually lock into place. Did you see that? That's an important feature of this knot. A lot of people that I know tie one kind of knot for braided line and another kind of knot for monofilament line or any other kind of line. With the guides knot, you don't have to do that. The guides knot works equally well with braided line, monofilament line, or any other type of line that I've ever used. Now we're going to tie some line on the spool of a spinning reel. Try this with your other knots, like a Palomar knot or a snail knot. The guides knot will tie on any diameter of object with any size line. Now I want to show you a real handy feature of the guides knot. You can actually pre-tie the knot and then put it on the object. Here I've looped the line around my little finger and I will tie the same knot that we've been tying. After I finish tying the knot, I will simply slip it over the end of the spool and tighten it up. Pre-tying is a technique I use over and over again. We'll be showing you some other examples of that. Here we're going to use the pre-tying technique of the guides knot to splice two pieces of line together. Up to this point, we have been using what I call the manual method of tying our knots. 
but there's a faster way to do it, which I call the spinning method or the fast method. In the method that we're tying now, which is the slow method, we are wrapping the tag end around the main line. But you can also wrap the main line around the tag end and it improves the speed. I can tie the manual method in about 20 to 30 seconds, but I can tie this fast method or the spinning method in around 10 seconds. We just tied this jig on the line using the manual method. Now watch what happens when we speed it up with the spinning method. Now notice how much easier and how much faster I can tie the jig on the line using the spinning method. Once again, watch as we use the spinning method to tie a line on the circle hook. You can't use the spinning method to tie on some objects. They have to have enough weight in order for you to be able to spin it around the main line. Now just watch for a while while I tie a crappie jig and a crankbait on the line using the spinning method. I don't want to bore you with this, but I'm an old school teacher and I know that repetition is the best teacher and I want to be sure that you understand how to tie this knot. Notice that when we use this method, Instead of wrapping the tag line around the main line, we wrap the main line around the tag line by spinning it. I told you at the beginning of this video that when I was testing the guides knot against all other knots, I found out that the guides knot would tie all of the knots that all of the other knots that I tested would tie in combination with the exception of the loop knot. But when I've shown other people how to do this, the one that they were most impressed with is when I showed them I could tie a snail knot using the guides knot. Snail knots, of course, are used on hooks that have either turned down or turned up eyes most of the time. Once again, I ran the line through, ran the line up the shank of the hook, pinched a loop in it, and I'm tying the tag line around the main line, but I'm also tying it around the hook. For a snail knot, I usually do about seven turns. You can do however many you want. When you finish winding around the hook and the main line, you run the tag line through the root, hold on to the tag line and tighten it onto the hook. And you've got to admit, that's an awful easy way to make a snail knot. As I started putting this video together, I thought, well, I should have tied some of these guides knots out on the water in actual fishing conditions. But I can't do that because it's really cold out today and I'm not fishing. So I'm going to play like I'm outside in my kayak and I want to tie my Bitsy bug on. I want to show you how easy it is. I would run the line through, pinch the line, twist it about four or five times around the main line, stick the line back through the loop, pull it down, and that's how long it takes me to tie my Bitsy Bug on the line using my guides knot. 
Well, that's about it, folks. I enjoyed making this video. It gave me something to do on a day when the weather's really bad outside and I couldn't go fishing. But I hope I've answered your questions. And remember, the purpose of my things to do videos is not to convert people to my way of doing things, but rather answer the questions from viewers and show you some things that I do that may be a little different from the norm. While I was making uh, this video, I did some research and found some of the uh, video clips that caused viewers to ask questions about which fishing knot I use and why I use it. And so we'll end this video by showing you some of those. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And don't forget to come around again. We like you, you know. <laughs>